and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. 2021 has been a tough year for video games. Many of us have shiny new PS5s, but not the greatest selection of games to play on them. Well, it finally happened. Sony showed us what we can expect on PlayStation over the next 12 months and even further into the future. For 40 minutes, Sony banged out game trailer after game trailer, and in there were some absolute surprises. And even a free game too. So here's a list of the top 10 surprises of the PlayStation Showcase. At number 10, and this one leaked a few days earlier, Alan Wake Remastered. The first time this franchise has been on PlayStation. Originally on Xbox and PC back in 2010, Alan Wake became a must-play psychological thriller which was even compared to Silent Hill at a time. Alan Wake has a cult following and I have to admit, I've never played it. Remedy's follow-up game, Control in 2019, a game about supernatural entities, heavily references Alan Wake in the same timeline of events. So if you enjoyed the story of Control and haven't played Alan Wake, we finally get the chance when its remaster arrives on October the 5th, only a month away. The next surprise was actually a bit of a downer. The long-awaited release of GTA Online and GTA 5 on PS5 was set for November. It had already been put back to that date. But because 2021 is the worst year ever, the new release date is now March 2022. But don't worry, this frown can be turned upside down for PlayStation players. This means the free $1 million PS Plus players can claim each month in-game has been extended by five months, an extra five million for you. And PS5 players will receive GTA Online for free when it finally releases. So make a note of March 2022, and let's hope this is the last delay for GTA on PS5. At number eight on the list is a free game you may have missed during the showcase. Blood Hunt, a free-to-play third-person battle royale set in the Vampire the Masquerade universe. The story takes you to Prague, where vampire factions are thrown into war with each other. Just take a look at this, I can safely say it's unlike other battle royale games. Blood Hunt is on early access on PC right now, and I have to admit, it's pretty good. Does this free to play game have the staying power, or is it too dark to prosper? I guess we wait and see. Blood Hunt will come to the PS5 this year, and there's only three months of this year left. The PS5 version is confirmed, yet no talk of PS4 just yet. I'll update the description below if the PS4 is confirmed. Out of nowhere, Uncharted has a remastered double pack coming to PlayStation 5, and get this, PC in early 2022. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End and the Lost Legacy standalone DLC have been given the next-gen treatment and can be played at the highest visual and sound quality gaming can offer in 2022. As a quick side note, if you haven't played The Lost Legacy, the game which throws Drake aside, you've got to give it a go. It's criminally underrated, probably because many of us think it will arrive on PS Plus eventually. At number 6 is the next Borderlands game, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Back in the days of Borderlands 2 in 2013, a DLC centred around Dungeons and Dragons, complete with roleplay options, added something to Borderlands we never knew we needed. Dragon Keep was so impressive and had a cult following that eventually it became its own full-length Borderlands outing for us all to enjoy. Tiny Tina is our narrator and dungeon master as we traverse the Wonderlands. If you're fearful that this isn't a fully fledged real Borderlands game, just look at it. The art style, the humour, the amount of guns on offer, this is a Borderlands game in everything but name. March 25th, 2022, if this is your jam. On to the top 5, and everything from this point is either a PlayStation exclusive or some sort of strange console exclusive because Xbox and PlayStation don't like to share things. Starting with KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic Remake. We don't have much footage to work with here, but to the acquainted you'll recognise Darth Revan, one of the most beloved Sith in Star Wars history. KOTOR will be a retelling of his story 4,000 years before Luke's story begins. Knights of the Old Republic was a milestone RPG back in 2003. It's likely many fans haven't seen this perspective on the Sith Lord before. You're likely getting sick of the repeated video clip now, so the last thing to know about KOTOR Remake is it's coming to PS5 and PC. This is a timed console exclusive. On to number 4. A year ago a PlayStation exclusive game codenamed Project Athea was unveiled. Now the game has evolved to Forspoken, and just look at the visuals. It kinda reminds me of the PS5 Epic Games demo, and and seems to be the sign that next gen really truly is here. We play as Frey, a young woman on the streets of New York, but that all changes when she hits 21 years of age, and she's transported to Athea, a land of nightmares and fantasy. 
From free running over sheer drops to scrapping with dragons and look at this lovely water bubble. Beautiful. It's beginning to give us more details about the story and flesh out who Frey is, who is absolutely dumbstruck by the events she's living through. And I have to admit, before the showcase I was lukewarm on Forspoken and now it's starting to appeal to me. How do you feel about it? The release date is spring 2022, so at least six months away. At three on our list is a shock announcement from Insomniac, the guys behind Marvel Spider-Man and Ratchet and Clank are making a Wolverine game. It's obviously a very long way to fruition, but the trailer tells us so much about the direction of the game. The CD bar, the cowboy hat, his super hearing to notice the guy creeping up behind him, and the moment the claws rip through his hands. It's not gameplay, so it's tough to know the plan for this in the long term, but I'm hyped and probably your dad's hyped too. Oh, and let me geek out for a moment and show you a few Easter eggs. The license plate reading HLK181 is a nod to Hulk number 181, the first full appearance of Wolverine in the Marvel Universe. The cash register rings up at $19.74, which is the year Wolverine was created. Both of these references could indicate Hulk being a key character or just a throwaway Easter egg. There's loads more details in this one scene here. Maybe we'll come back to this another time. Staying with Insomniac for another point, Spider-Man 2 is real. Insomniac are living up to their names, with multiple projects happening all at the same time. Nobody at all is getting any sleep there. Spider-Man 2 confirms Peter is not left behind after Miles took the limelight last year, and the duo will face off against the most well-known and loved villain there is, Venom. Here's a cool fact about this, Venom will be played by Tony Todd the Candyman from the horror films. Horror film fans will lose their mind about this casting. And there's a second voice in the trailer, a Russian sounding villain, which we are guessing is Sergei Kravinov, AKA Kraven the Hunter, or this may be the return of Rhino again for the third game in a row. I'm leaning towards Sergei, AKA Kraven the Hunter. When we know more about this game, I'll definitely be covering it in more detail, like uncovering each of the new bad guys we'll be facing, nearer the time that is. Spider-Man 2 isn't going to arrive until 2023, so putting a pin in it is probably the right thing to do right now. Okay, before we go to number one, a quick salute to Gran Turismo 7. I struggle to get hyped for racing games, but I know there is a serious racing audience around this game, and even I can see the quality on offer. Pinpoint accurate cars in visuals, handling and even engine sound, meticulously recreated official tracks from around the real world and a fully controllable photo mode. And if we're lucky, we may even get the Toyota Prius. Wow. Gran Turismo 7 is a PlayStation exclusive dropping on March 4th on both PS4 and PS5. And now the number one pick from the show, God of War Ragnarok. It finally exists officially and Cory Barlog has now heard of it. God of War Ragnarok picks up after the end of 2018's God of War, but some time has passed. Atreus is older, Kratos is grumpier, and Thor has arrived. In terms of gameplay, it looks like more of what won Game of the Year three years ago. Sheer joy wrecking every enemy you can find. We find out more about the God of War of Norse mythology here. Tyr, he's alive and well, and Kratos and Atreus free him. As the title suggests, Ragnarok will happen in this game. First there will be cruel winters, check. Then moral chaos will follow, check. And then the earth will sink into the sea. It's not all a downer though, the prophecy tells us Balder will return from the dead. And that's the guy we killed in the last game, and that's why his mum keeps attacking us this time around. God of War Ragnarok will release in 2022, but quite when, we still don't know. And it will be on PS4 as well as PS5, because we all know how hard it is to find a PS5. So there we have it, 10 of the biggest surprises and huge announcements from the PlayStation Showcase. What are you excited to play? I'm obviously most excited to play Gran Turismo, because I obviously love cars. Brum. I'm Adam, you're awesome, I'll see you next time.